a couple of the more fair modern decks. We've seen some turn three kills, some turn two <laughs> virtual kills. Yep. Now we're gonna have some honest magic here. This uh, is more of Brian Kibler's wheelhouse right here. I Freddy is going to very quickly search up a Sacred Foundry off of that windswept teeth. They'll fall down to 17. Looks like Noble Hierarch's coming into the red zone. And we'll see what Drew's follow-up is. It'll be a Tarmogoyf, so he's not wasting any time here. A little bit of shortcutting. Westberg with an overgrown tomb. That was his first land. We'll see what land number two is. It's an isolated chapel. And over to Drew I Freddy we go. Windswept Heath beat downs here with Tarmogoyf, a little exalted action to make an attack for two. However, Path Exile is going to take care of that. So I Freddy will get to search up a land. He'll also search up a land there with the Windswept Heath, save the players a little bit of time. Yeah, Drew messaged me on Facebook, and he's just like, hey, do you have a deck for me to play? Do you have any good ideas? And I was like, you know, I gave him some suggestions, and I, he's like, oh, good. I thought you were going to tell me to play, like, Grixis Control or something. I was like, no, man, I know your style. <laughs> he's like, dude, I don't think we've ever played a match against each other. And it's like, no, we haven't, but I, I've watched you play, man. You play a lot of red. You're tight aggressive. <laughs> so it is, it is not surprising to see him playing this deck. So you would not recommend Grixis Control to me either? No, of course not. Good man. Good man. You have to make recommendations to the person themselves. You Very know, good man. he's not asking me what deck I would play. That's true. Because that doesn't help him. That's very true. Another Tarmogoyf. We'll get our Tarmogoyf die out there. Let you know the sizing of that big creature. I believe right now it's two three. Does Westberg have land number three? It looks like he does. Basic forest. Powerful. Also stirring wildwood. We'll just play the forest past the turn back. I, Freddy, will quickly draw. Here comes Tarmogoyf in for three because of Exalted. There's an Obzon charm. Oh. Thanks, <laughs> Noble Hierarch. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that'll get the job done. Another Tarmogoyf. Well, he's got plenty of those <laughs> the left. Play set. Yep. This guy's rich over here. There's a windswept teeth. Pass the turn back. Oh, my oh. God. Well, that was a good draw. Maelstrom Pulse was not a bad draw. Later, Tarmogoyfs. <laughs> That's a stirring Wildwood. Talk about a perfect turn. I guess we don't need that Tarmogoyf die anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, John might need it at maybe, some point. Maybe. His hand is just chock full of Siege Rhinos and Obzidots, yeah. and I think he likes the spot. There are a few things that feel worse than getting two for one by Maelstrom Pulse. It feels awful every time. Here comes Noble Hierarch in for one. Westberg down to 18. Pass a turn back. And now it's going to start looking like standard. Yep. Here's the Siege Rhino. Here they come. They travel in packs. They do. 15 to 18 in favor of Waste. Oh, excuse me. 21 for Westberg, I believe, is what he's going to jump up to. Yeah, 21 to 12. Now, here's a Collective Company. That's, that's the last card here for Drew. It's going to have to be a doozy. No more Tarmogoyfs left, it appears. Now the Reliquary. Man, 7 for 7. No misses. And scavenging news is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it's not bad. Not a lot to feast on right now. I mean, all of Drew's Tarmogoyfs are gone. So you could just start going to work on John's graveyard. Yeah, he'll get to eat one Tarmogoyf and gain a life. The ooze is a 3-3. Three, three. There's also an active knight now. That's not so bad. Magus of the Moon. Ooh. It's a dry. Hey, one good top deck deserves this, another, yeah, man. This might, this might be a quick turnaround. Yep. After that Maelstrom Pulse beating. I right, Freddy going to check his uh, check his graveyard here. Going to eat a scavenging ooze. Good sequencing here. Going to use the stomping ground. Attack here for five with the ooze, thanks to the Noble Hierarch. No blocks to be had. Now he'll play Magus. <laughs> the fun police. Yep. Well, you have some forests. You have a forest, excuse me, and a bunch of mountains, and you just drew a Verdant Catacombs. Obsidot is a little tough to cast. Are you sure? I thought Westbrook was going to run away with this game. Oh, me too. After that pulse, I thought this was over. There's an ooze. Verdant Catacombs. Pass the turn back. Knight's going to go active. Sacrifice Forest. 
Blood Moon effects are just really fun and really fair. Yeah. <laughs> People don't like Tron, which is understandable. Blood Moon is similarly frustrating to play against. Now the Relicory is going to search up an Arid Mesa that cannot be sacrificed thanks to Magus of the Moon. It's an Arid Mesa Mountain. I have Freddy will draw a Blood Moon. <laughs> yep. I'm going to make sure that this, this fun never stops. The question now, is this scavenging who's going to get in there? You've got an opponent here in John Westbrook who really can't cast very many spells. Yeah, so now you, if you're in Drew's spot, you need to find the cleanest way, the quickest way to end this game. Knight, I believe, is a 6-6. Six, six. With Exalted, it'll make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, John can't activate the Scavenging Ooze. Mm -hmm. All he has is a bunch of mountains. So does not have enough power to take it down with a double block. No good blocks at all. So Westbrook is going to take seven. Looks like he's going to fall down to nine. And Knight has some real closing speed on this game. But Westbrook will get the opportunity to activate Scavenging Ooze next turn to that one basic forest if he does leave it available. Yeah, but I mean, if that's your only colored mana source that helps you, that's rough to have to use it just to do that. Agreed. Agreed. All right, John Westberg, what's the draw step? Twilight Mire. Mountain, actually. <laughs> In an alternate universe, Twilight Mire's great. Yes. Magus of the Moon into Blood Moon. Pretty tough to beat. There's a Mire. Pass the turn back. I have Freddy who's going to draw. Didn't get a great look at it. Here comes Knight. So currently a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> Looks like Westbrook's going to fall down to 2. Not going to go for the double block. Kind of surprising. The follow-up is a locks it on Smiter. I afraid he will pass the turn back over to Westbrook, and we are all done here. Drew, I afraid he's going to win game number 2 here over John Westbrook. Now I accompany... And Obzon going to get ready here for game number three. If there is a double block there, Ooze removes one of the lands, makes Knight into a 6-6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one creature dies, either the Ooze or the Siege Rhino, and then the Knight dies. Yeah. And then you have to contend with the, Siege Rhino, or the, with the Scavenging Ooze, that's big, or Correct. the Smiter. So I, yeah. I, I don't think that John wins that game even if, a double block, uh, even if a double block takes place. I was a little surprised to see no block there, though. Yeah, I mean, he would have to double block and then... Drew plays the Smiter, and then next turn he would probably have to chump block after drawing, like, Basic Swamp or something, and uh -huh. then he would have to peel an Abrupt Decay or something. To, well, I guess he still had the, the additional Blood Moon, too. Yeah. So, he's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, there he's was, pretty there locked was, Yeah, there was no getting out of it. Sideboard's there again for both players. I have Freddy using those Blood Moons and Magus of the Moon to his advantage. Maybe the Bonfire of the Damned is in. We'll have to find out as we make our way through game number three. Westberg on the play here. Anything too crazy change. Not, you mean, you know well, your opponent has Blood Moons now. Celestial Purge, Golgari Charm, like those are magic cards. He didn't draw any fetch lands. Okay, very game. true. So him him getting worked over by Blood Moon was not necessarily his own fault, you okay. know. Uh, he didn't really have a whole lot of control with that. So maybe this game he'll be mulliganing maybe a little bit more aggressively and try and not let that happen again because it seems like barring a Blood Moon effect, he like he won game one, he was in a pretty good shape that game. Uh, it did involve a top deck Mills from Pulse, granted, but I think he was still okay. That was just kind of insult to injury at that point. So I think his matchup's pretty good. You just need to not lose to a Blood Moon. Well, you can see the options there for both players. They'll get ready here for the next game. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about SCG Game Night, the very popular promotion with only two months left in 2015. So that means starting today, actually. First of all, no shaving. Second of all... That, otter. That otter cannot shave. That's correct. Not allowed. No shave November for the otter. That's available all month long. And then for the month of December, once you do shave, you can get yourself reindeer. So that's fantastic in December. Now, of course, this popular promotion available to all of our Canadian players now at domestic rates. So if you do want to get signed up for that, have your local store contact ISP at StarCityGames.com, or you can go to StarCityGames.com slash game night. Get ready to get 
the Otter for November, the Reindeer for December, and 2016 stuff going to be announced pretty soon. So look forward to that. And no, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I wasn't even going to ask. Good. I'm used to the rejection at this point, Cedric. You, you have broken me. Don't bother asking because I'm not going to tell you, Jerry. Okay? Goodness. How many times do I have to tell you? Uh, I was about three. Just want to make sure. Drew, I'm afraid, did, you, you mentioned pretty, I guess you said tight aggressive. Tight aggressive. Yeah, he looked pretty at home playing a creature deck there. Yeah. Understood how combat worked right away. What he wanted to accomplish there with the knight. And exalted with noble hierarchs. For some players, and it feels like Drew, but you think of like a Brian Kibler, stuff like that. They're real comfort zone deck like this, Nine Company deck. Yeah, like I said, Drew has mostly played a Tarka Red, like that, that style of deck. Okay. But he's a threat, you know? Like, he knows, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to attack. He knows how to eke out those small edges. Uh, very similar to yourself, I imagine. Well, I love a healthy beatdown. I don't blue cards in my deck. I'm not interested in Snapcaster Mage and Colagon's Command. How do you feel about Blood Moon? It's pretty lame, actually. Yeah. You're like, I can beat him straight up. Well, like, so that's the only card I actually don't like in Modern, I think. Like, I'm actually okay with, like, kind of the nonsense that people do with, um, with stuff like Summer Bloom and Amulet. Like, I'm actually fine with that. Because, like, once you sign up for Modern Term, you're just like, okay, this is just a thing that people can do. Blood Moon is just a little bit frustrating to me. I think it's just kind of a lame way to win. Yeah, it's understandable. I just don't like that, like, at the beginning of the game, you're just like, I, I better play around this. I don't know if they have it, but I guess I'll fetch a basic because you could have, like, one. Yeah, that, that's just kind of annoying. But if, like, you want to summer bloom me on turn two and play me real Titan, like, cool. That's fine. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but... but I don't really make whatever. sense. I don't really make sense. But if that's a thing that you want to do and you have that draw, awesome. Is this in reference to the summer bloom or the blood moon? The summer bloom. Okay. Yeah. Blood moon's just lame. Let me play. If I can't win, that's fine, but let me play. Boom, Inquisition. Get that Magus of the Moon right out of here. Just take it. <laughs> was talking to John in between rounds, and he said that's basically all he wanted was just an Inquisition or a Thoughts. He's on turn one. He gets every deck. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. That's why you play the black green decks, man. You want some discard. Now, there are two collective companies over there that Inquisition cannot take. In addition to Magus of the Moon, you can take another Reliquary or a Wild Nacoddle. Plains and Windswept Teeth are the lands. I'll take the Windswept Teeth. <laughs> It's a good choice. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. That's really? kind of like casting Blood Moon. Pretty much. Can you imagine if discard spells could take lands? That would be really silly. I think magic would be not great. There goes the Nakadal. Encroach is here. <laughs> Shoebox, Encroach. Shoebox got jokes. Yeah, our directors are hilarious. Funny man. Yeah. <laughs> It's an uncommon, by the way. You're going to have to pay a little extra for that one. <laughs> Urza's Destiny, if memory serves. Yep. Uncommon. Yep. That's it. I'm going to I'm gonna get on Magic Online, play some Encroaches. <laughs> yeah. Play an Encroach Land Destruction deck. Yeah. <laughs> Turn two here for Westberg. He's got a Verdant Catacombs. Let's see if he wants to search for the basic forest. I have a feeling he does. Well, he started with basic swamp. Yep. Yeah, he's going all the way through to get a basic forest. None of this blood moon nonsense. Scavenging ooze, go. And then next turn, it looks like he has windswept teeth to complete the trifecta. Bang. So, did not select Magus of the Moon with that Inquisition for a reason. Yeah, and now I just don't care about blood moon effects. My whole entire deck's online for the most part. And you know, obviously, still going to be tough to cast. True. But there's a blood moon out there, but... Might be a little ambitious. Yep. One swept teeth is line number two here for iFreddy. <laughs> Westberg will draw. Scavenging ooze. See an abrupt decay over there in Westberg's hand as well. I wonder what the thought process is here. A couple different ways he can go. 
could just eat the Nicotl, put out the other scavenging ooze off maybe a temple garden, or whether or not he wants to commit to fetching that basic planes. So right now, he doesn't have any white cards. Mm -hmm. Maybe if Drew spends his turn just casting the Magus of the Moon, he's fine with that. Ooze is going to take care of the Nicotl. Or maybe you just don't commit the other Ooze this turn. Well, Westbrook's going to sacrifice that Windswept Heath. I'm afraid he's going to sacrifice his Windswept Heath. Looks like they might just be shortcutting here. Yeah, save some time. I'm afraid he's going to search up Basic Forest because he has a Magus of the Moon in hand and wants to be able to actually cast his spells. There's Temple Garden. This is another Scavenging Ooze. Now keep in mind, Westbrook does have a Maelstrom Pulse in hand. We saw how powerful that was last game. Mountain the draw here for Drew Ifredi. There's a Plains. And now there's a Magus. Going to get that out there. It doesn't appear to be much better to do right now for Drew. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that. Well, he's got these collective companies in hand that he's working towards. Right. I think he, he has a Knight of the Royal Quarry that he could play instead. That would kind of halt the beatdowns, maybe. This could be bait also. Tasker the draw. To go along with a pulse and a decay. Looks like we're going to see Maelstrom pulse, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, this is what these green black decks do. You know, they control the game a little bit, but then they establish a clock, look to turn the corner very quickly. And that's so I think the use of the green in the deck, because we saw it Mardu yesterday, mm -hmm. and we talked about maybe, if you, do you want to be Mardu, do you want to be Jund or Obzon? What are the benefits of playing green? It's really just how big the creatures are and how Tarmogoy from Scavenging Ooze are able to end games pretty quickly. Here's Collected Company. John Westberg attacking in with no fear. Picked up a path to exile on his draw step, so now he has access to that and Abrupt Decay for this turn. What's there to be scared of when you have two removal spells? Yeah. Tarmogoy for Knight. So Drew picks up two great creatures. I think they're dead and dead. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> dead and dead. We'll get the search with the Tarmogoyf. There's a basic forest. The last basic land out of the deck. I believe I Freddy on this attack is going to fall down to five. Yeah, it's close. He might be able to stabilize, though. He still has another Collected Company hanging out. Now Collected Company. Eight of eight. Oh. Eight of eight Important. this weekend. Important. Eight, eight of eight. It has not coughed up only one creature. It also hasn't flat missed this weekend. I'm not trying to jinx it. I'm just stating facts, people. There's a Temple Garden. Here's a Wild McConnell. Pass the turn back. Westberg with a Tasker in hand. Drew a Tarmogoyf. He can play, he can play both of those. Jeez. Yeah, so another turn where he gets to play two spells. My goodness. But do you want to risk it this turn? GM your two oozes into Collected Company mana. Um, sometimes I'm a coward. Sometimes I just well, want, to, I want to hold steady. You get sometimes. to play two creatures this turn, so maybe it's risky to attack this turn, and next turn you have a big attack with four creatures. Maybe that's better. You see that thing he's doing with the pen? I want to be able to do that. Just a small thing. Josh Ravitz is the first one that I knew that could do that really well. Yeah. I was always jealous. I spent some time trying to learn. It was a comedy of errors. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. Some people don't have that dexterity, yeah. you know? Taking a look at the graveyard here is Westberg. It looks like Tassiger's on the way. I wouldn't be surprised if John doesn't attack. Oh, me neither. It seems... A little more conservative to not attack this turn, but it's, it sets you up for such a better attack next turn. Plus, Drew basically is priced into casting the Collected Company this turn, so then John is operating with more information next turn as to what the attacks and blocks are going to look like. Yeah, he says no attacks. Here comes Collected Company. And this is going to be the one that where it whiffs, right? Yeah. Where <laughs> John could have just attacked. It's like a bird in Noble Hierarch. Oh, voice of Resurgence, Scavenging Ooze. Now, this is actually important because Drew gets to use Scavenging Ooze first now. Yeah. And there are some creatures in his graveyard. And nine for nine. True. True.
Lightning Bolt will take her on one scavenging use. That's another creature to feed on right now if you're Ifredi. Looks like he might be catching up here. There's three mana. We know he's got another Reliquary in hand. So he's going to cast that. He'll eat with ooze, take care of one of the scavenging oozes in the graveyard. See if he wants to eat with another ooze or not, and he will. Eat an eye of the reliquary. Gain another life, grows ooze into a 4-4. Four, four. And, and up to seven life. Yep. One of these things that the Night Company deck does really, really well, it, the creatures that it plays are all really large. Yes. And you can really outclass other green decks as far as combat is concerned because your creatures get so big. Yeah, you think of Abzan as like the king of mid-range, right? But he's kind of just getting out mid-ranged here. Like, Knight is huge, Ooze is huge. Oh. Drew just has had more card advantage this game. Westbrook has a thought seize. It took care of another Knight. Now it might be time to eat some stuff with his own scavenging Ooze. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he's going to do. He'll eat Knight, and he'll eat Magus of the Moon. Tarmogoy is a 3-4. Yep. Oh, we're passing. This is one of those matchups where you'd really like to see Lingering Souls. Yeah, if you're John, the Lingering Souls is kind of the breaker, right? Get to the skies because the ground is so just gummed up. Yeah. There's Kosali Pride Mage. I mean, John did his best. Try to turn that corner, get a little aggressive. You know, the turn where we saw Decay and Path, I think, I think that's the right line. I do too. Kills both his creatures, get in for five points of damage, put him to five. Maybe hope that the other collected company isn't too brutal. Stuff like that. And it wasn't, in all fairness. It was pretty tame. Voice of Resurgence, Scavenging Ooze. It looks like the Ooze is coming across in the red zone here. It's a 4-4 four, four base power and toughness, but there's an Exalted Trigger from Kasali Pride Mage, so you got a 5-5 five, five coming through. And I like this. Like I said, Drew, tight, aggressive. Like, the board's kind of clogged up. Uh, you'd see a lot of players just be like, eh, I don't know if my attacks are great. I'll just pass the turn. You know, I have more creatures. I have this Knight active. Well, but you, you know I can appreciate some good creature combat. Yeah, I mean, he sees a window, he's taking it. Yeah. It's like nothing bad happens if I make this attack. He even has, like, Knight of the Reliquary to go get uh, Kessig Wolf Run if he wants to. I think he wants to. He's already reaching for his mana. So right now, Tarmogoy is a 3-4, Tasker is a 4-5. So can he deal 9? What I think he's going to do is start by shrinking Tarmogoy. So it's a 2-3 now. So get those sorceries out of here. Yep. Not sure if that helps or not. It might not help in the short term. Maybe it helps in the long term. Maybe. Yeah. The, the question here is which threat do you value the highest, right? Like, Ooze has a lot of relevant text on it. And with him maybe losing his Ooze here in this combat, he'll be without news, but John will have one. Mm hmm. And then John's Ooze can control Knight of the Reliquary a little bit. It can control the creatures out of the graveyard. It can control the sizing of Tarmogoyfs. A yeah. lot of relevant stuff there. Yeah, the choke point is is John's mana. He only has access to two green mana and only three mana total. So, yep. you know, he's, he's got a lot of things with activated abilities. He has a tasker and the scavenging use. He just doesn't have enough to actually utilize those cards. Two lands in the graveyard right now for EF Ready. So it looks as though neither Reliquary is at 4 4 at this point. So I think he might be wanting to take care of Tassiger. Yep. Tarmogoy's going to move back up to a 3-4. Now there's our creatures in the graveyard. Westberg will draw. And for what it's worth, this could also be just a plan to get big toughness creatures out of the way so that then Castle Wolf Run can run wild. That's true. I mean, then you can start sending in first maybe the Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. I might want to send Old Voice in there anyway. I kind of want that elemental to him. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. It's good when it has Trample. Let's see what this is. Maybe a Brep Decay? Yeah, take care of the knight. We're going to get an activation, of course. Going to sacrifice a forest. And John basically has to use this main phase because of the Voice of Resurgence. At this stage, you do not want to give away an elemental token. No. 
So there's her Keswick Wolf run. Legacy Premier IQ player is your pairing. Tarmogoyf's going to be a 4 or 5 now. It appears both players are going to check to make sure of the sizing. Yeah, okay, it's going to stay at a 3 4. Instant land creature in the graveyard. Yep, still no sorcery. Okay. There's a wolf run out there right now that can pump for uh, for three. Might be worth an attack from the scavenging ooze here, up from John's side. You think just because you're not blocking with it? Maybe. Plus Drew's at seven. His life total is pretty low. There's Nared Mesa. Here comes Wild and the Coddle, maybe. You mentioned tight aggressive. Looks like aggressive aggressive to me. No attack goes missed. Yeah. I'm not going to leave any points on the board, man. Can't take them with you. And I believe he's out of basics. So this could be a painful search. Yep, Temple Garden. I'm afraid he's going to fall down to four. Yep, big pump. It's going to be a wolf run for four. With the three from, from Wild Nakato and the one from Kosai Pride Mage, pretty healthy attack there, eight. And now the Reliquary is going to bite the dust. Yeah, basically half his life total except for the scavenging ooze. Yep. So ooze is going to move up to a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, Drew's just trying to be as aggressive as possible. Uh, I guess it's worth noting that they're kind of running out of time, too. Yeah, I mean, we're under five minutes, about to be under four. Probably enough time to finish, but we can't make Legacy terribly long decisions anymore. Yeah, so get John low enough so that he has to start blocking, and then you get to start making these up trades thanks to the Kessig Wolf run. You know, you start getting to trade, like, your Wild in the Cottle for a scavenging use, maybe Voice of Resurgent for Tarmogoyf, still leave an elemental token behind. Looks like players are just confirming life totals at this point. Modern open players. Oh, this could be like he said take seven, which means that he missed the exalted trigger or something, yeah. It all depends on the verbal communication between the two players. Voice of Resurgence looks like it wants to block. It's going to block scavenging news. Tarmogoy is going to come through. It's going to put Ifredi down to one. He will get an elemental token. Lingering Souls has shown up now. Oh, that would have been lethal if he did that before combat. Oh, you're right. He didn't have a sorcery in the graveyard. Yeah. Wow. It would have forced the double jump block. Yeah. He missed that. I think Tarmogoy may be the draw here. Now I've got to figure out, is there a way for him to make it through another turn here? He drew a away for the turn. I think this works out perfectly so that if John just blocks one thing, there's no way that Drew can deal him 10 damage. He's going to attack with everything. Here's a big time pump. Two damage is going to come through. The elemental is a three power creature. Pump for four makes it a seven. Seven minus one is six. Seven, eight. Down to two? Yeah, but two is not zero. Yeah, and that's going to do it. John Westbrook's going to win this match here over Drew Freddy. Two games to one. Abzan is going to take care of Naya Company. And for John Westbrook, moves on to 11, two, and one. And if the pairings are favorable, she'll be able to draw on a top eight and be 11-2-2 two, and two, and work its way in the elimination rounds. And he started 2-2-1, two, two, and one, I believe. It was ugly at the beginning. It was ugly at the beginning. He's, he's rattled off a few in a row. Well, yeah, knocked the dust maybe, off. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe shaking the rust off, you know, getting back into the groove of things. And a little too much Hearthstone. Work his way back in the old Magic is, game. Is there a such thing? I don't play Hearthstone. I don't play so Hearthstone. I, don't I, have no, okay. I have no clue. It's flashing lights, a lot of noise. <laughs> way too old for that stuff. But John Westberg clearly 
good at both games here. He is 11-2-1 here in Dallas. And as I said... It